Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another Midweek Mentor. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the privilege of pastoring the group of people called Lifeline Church. If you're new with us here, please give us a like, a comment, and a share, and we would love to connect with you. You can follow any of the links in the description to do that. Does anyone want to take a stab at what I want to talk about today? <laughs> Maybe you're watching this later, but uh, today, based on what time it is when you're watching, the election results may or may not have come back. Uh, as I'm sitting, it's a little after 8 in the morning on the 4th, and so it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Well, I better check. I don't think it's done yet, but, you know, it's really wire to wire there. Yeah, no, not done. So what I want to talk about is stress. <laughs> the stress that you might be feeling from this situation of the presidential election. Um, and I just had some thoughts about this because depending on what, who you voted for, what side of the issues you might be standing on, you could be feeling an extreme amount of pressure and stress and anxiety from everything going on. And I just want to remind you of a couple scriptures that came to my mind this morning as I was Honestly, I was praying for you. I'm praying for our country and just praying for myself and my own family. Is that um, things are not as bad as they once were? Let me explain myself. In Romans 13, Paul was writing to the church in Rome. That's why it's called Romans. And in Romans 13, he wrote something like this. I've got it right over here. So let me read it to you. Romans chapter 13, starting in verse 1. He says this, everyone must submit to their governing authorities for all authority comes from God and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Verse two, so anyone who rebels against authorities rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Now, that sounds pretty straightforward, um, but context can help us understand how massive it is for Paul to be writing like this at the time that he was writing this, there was a guy named Nero who was in charge. Let's talk about Nero for a minute. Go ahead on your own time, Google Nero, Emperor Nero, N-E-R-O, Nero. He was an interesting character. Um, just a couple uh, you know, search results later, I kind of was just poking around, getting ready for this, thinking, hmm, what was Nero up to? Um, the first couple hits I got on Nero was he slept with his mom. So there's that. And then uh, he killed her. So there's that. And then r shortly after that, he was, he was during, in, the mean, in the meantime of all that, he was pulling Christians out of their homes and burning them and killing them and the persecution towards the Christians at that time was like nothing we've ever experienced, <laughs> not in my lifetime and I don't think in yours either. And in the midst of all of that, that's who's in charge, that's who the president is, that's the emperor. He writes, submit to your governing authorities. <laughs> Paul. Paul, shouldn't he be telling us to protest and riot, to overthrow? No, he didn't really say that. He didn't really say that because depending on what side of the issue you're on, you might view either one of these candidates that we are uh, about to elect as like the devil. Like no matter which side you're on, one could be really bad, one could be really bad, and I'm not even gonna begin to start there. I am admittedly, not that political, um, which gives me a perspective that I'm not too much in the weeds. I mean, I did vote, but I'm not inside of that tangled mess as, as much as I hope I'm not. To see a, a bigger view is that, you know, it's gonna be okay. Because no matter who the president is, God is still on his throne. God is still king. Even when Nero, was in charge. God was still king. <laughs> and to be quite honest, Christians do the best 
when we're persecuted. <laughs> Christians do the best when things aren't going well in the world. Christians seem to shine. And so no matter what side this thing ends up on, I want you to be encouraged today that if you lean into your faith in Jesus, no matter who the president is, your, your savior is still Jesus. That's who your savior is. Another scripture goes like this, 1 Thessalonians. He says this, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands just as we instructed you before. There's something, I, this may or may not have anything to do with what we're facing, but I, I believe it is. It, it does have something to do with what we're facing that we are gonna go to work today, like I'm doing right now. We're gonna go to work today, we're gonna go to work tomorrow, uh, no matter who wins or loses, man, I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna keep working, I'm gonna keep serving God, I'm gonna keep moving forward, I'm gonna keep encouraging people, and I'm not gonna live a loud life in, in the sense that I'm gonna go make a huge stink and fuss and um, damage property or do anything like that. I'm gonna live a quiet life, minding, minding my own, taking care of my family, taking care of my responsibilities, loving my neighbor as myself. That's, that's my responsibility. That's your responsibility if you're a Christ follower. Now, I mean, do your part. Vote and vote for the measures you want. Vote for the policies you want based on the values that you have. Absolutely, do so. But remember this, this whole democratic process we have is a privilege. It's a privilege that we get to vote. How's that for perspective? No one voted for Nero. Do you understand what I mean? I mean, we're still voting here. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that we even get to live in a society like this. So remember to stay grateful. Remember to know that we are, we are blessed. We, we get to go to work today. We get to have certain luxuries. I mean, that's, let's not lose our heads. Lifeline Church, don't lose your head. Things are gonna be okay. And keep in mind, like I said before, the worse things get in our world, the better Christians seem to do. So let's lean into that. Let's say, bring it on, bring it on, because we're gonna be the light of the world. We're gonna, we're gonna let our light shine no matter, no matter which way things go. I'm not gonna be anxious, I'm gonna be anxious for nothing, but I'm gonna pray about everything and no matter what the outcome is, I'm gonna to continue to pray and I'm gonna to continue to press in and serve God to the best of my ability, living a quiet life, working with my hands, submitting to my authorities. And that's my word for today. I hope it blessed you. I know it's not a typical Bible study like I normally do, but I thought considering the day uh, that you might need this. And so if you know somebody who might need this, go ahead and give it a share and let them see it as well. Um, especially if they're a Christ follower, thinking about being a Christ follower. There's a lot of peace for following Jesus uh, in seasons like this. And so let's lean into that. Let's be evangelistic right now. Let's reach out to our neighbors and friends and our families and our loved ones and let them know, hey, there's hope and peace despite all the things going on. In, in the face of all the things going on, there is joy and peace to be found in Jesus. And that's my hope for you. Now I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray against any anxiety and stress right now. Father, I just pray that no matter what happens in the next 24 hours, 48 hours, God, I ask that you would just lift your people up, that they would have a perspective that's not in the weeds, but it's up in the clouds, Lord, that we can see things from a 30,000 foot view, look at the big picture and say, God is still in control. And that there would be a, a release from all anxiety people are feeling. That we wouldn't be bitter towards one another. That we, that we wouldn't let our enemy, the enemy of our soul, the devil, not a human, the devil, we wouldn't let him turn us against one another. But that we would continue to love one another serve one another, pray for one another, hope for the best for one another. I pray that for all your people, God, and all the people coming into your family. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you again very soon.